Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at my autopilot project that I just have updated to version 2 decimal 1. Um, in basic it is the original um, autopilot project. I have not made any um, updates as such to it other than some graphical layout and a few glitches um, so as you know you would see the autopilot version 2 right now but now it is system 1 here so you can see you have the latest one version and then you just click it just as before and you can click up here in the left hand corner and you can take your mouse and drag it wherever you want it to stay. I can just set it up here for my layout here now. The layout actually matches each other. That's a side note. It is a small project I have been working on here in the, in the weekend for some of my uh, videos. So we actually got a bit of information frames per second instead of having that small window up there but as well for some testing as you can see it tells us a few information but that is another story for uh, a live stream or such sorry not live stream, uh, another video where I'm doing something that I would go into more details about that main project because that's not our main focus right now so just remove it and to talk about the changes as you can see in the old version all the uh, buttons to push up here to engage the autopilot was red it was made in a manner of the original autopilot project However, the red uh, text wasn't that great, uh, it didn't look well, so I actually think that the green and the yellow and the white actually worked out best. So I got to a point where I wanted to change the red to white, so right now when things is not active they are white that's basically the only difference as well as the um, the main texture layout color has changed from the bluish to this more gray uh, color I experimented a bit with a black color pitch black color like you normally would find for an autopilot that it actually is some kind of black but uh, I didn't really like it and, and think that this here might be the best option. Um, also, when you start um, doing this, it's really crucial that you pick the right color so whenever you are moving it, uh, it would be nice for your eyes to actually look at it by the grey color here it seems to be fairly good so far uh, and as you know from the project you just click uh, or if you are new to it you just click what you want to activate and if it is stock code for the autopilot of X-Plane I know the X-Plane Autopilot has been a bit of a mess uh, and that's actually why it was a bit complicated to, this, to do this project in the beginning. Um, the project was originally made for X-Plane 10 but luckily it's still working today in X-Plane 11 even though some might have seen for some default aircraft if you're going into the MD-80 and such I mean it is there are a few quirkiness where things uh, 
working right and that's basically because of um, the development of X-Plane as we can see that um, that some of those things that actually was prob a problem in the past that I have made some kind of uh, best uh, solution for to meet as many as possible aircrafts uh, was made and, and that's basically because um, due to, to some coatings made for specific aircraft and that was different so it's actually kind of difficult to, to match all the coatings but in the end um, this project works well with those aircraft I have tested of, of course the most common problems you may get into that is um, some functionalities for the altitude the um, Alabero, Alabero aircraft and Carinero aircraft uh, mostly Carinero I can talk about uh, had the opportunity to use the original uh, source code for altitude um, but that's not present in this aircraft you can see I can't move because the way it actually works if you're new to this is actually you can engage the mode up here and whenever it's green it's active whenever it is yellow it is some kind of armed just like you see down here um, so right now the uh, aircraft is armed so it would actually capture the altitude um, that's one thing to note with the, with the project here that uh, I made it so it actually would arm the uh, altitude um, you could of course if you press up here at the right text I can force it and then it would actually be the altitude hold and then it would actually hold my actual uh, altitude uh, another example is for nav right now you can see it is not uh, on the main track uh, for uh, CRS1 or CRS2 but as soon as it gets active it would switch over to green so it's just like the default uh, autopilot of X-Plane where yellow indicates that it is not yet active but it is armed because if I switch over to the GPS source you can see then it switches to the GPS and then it actually knows uh, where it needs to fly so that's uh, something to, to be aware of there. Um, so I have tried to, to work it out. Um, and to get back to the values uh, that was original, the, the main reason I did the project was actually to make easy adjustments to the autopilot uh, because um, let's get rid of the yoke here um, in some aircraft it is more easy or takes some time to adjust so whenever down in this section here um, if you push uh, left mouse button it will actually switch so right now you can see the speed is moving by one knot at a time if I then left click now it's 10 at a time as well as 10 degrees at a time and that makes adjustments much much faster uh, because we are in a desktop simulator and we know that in reality it is easier to adjust by using the knobs and such um, and the same for the vertical speed 100 at a time or 1000 at a time as well for the altitude but that's not actually working uh, for this particular aircraft you can see it works if I do it inside the aircraft and, and that's basically because my project actually reads this value however it's not possible for to do anything about uh, giving it information so 
even though when you try to do it down here it actually gives the default information to explain but it can't do much about it because it's a custom code made for, made by Alabeo. So it is some compromises but look at this like a virtual keyboard you can say it's in, instead of using the keyboard command this is a visualization you can say of doing those defaults things and and my project is capable of doing exactly the same as what SciTech uh, panels could do and such those default um, units um, my project can do the same because it's built uh, to work with those codes but when developers go beyond those codes it can't uh, because there's no way it actually can look for those codes because then you would really have to customize the autopilot for this spe uh, for this specific aircraft perhaps an extension could be made or something like that and then it could, uh, could work out but again then uh, you will need any add-ons and I would say that somehow I actually wouldn't would like to actually expand it further so it actually could work with aircraft like the LRB or Carinado aircraft I would really would like that if I have uh, an option to to get into uh, getting the uh, altitude to work because so far as I remember that is actually the only thing that is not working for the Carinado and other beer aircraft. The other things should work just fine. So, um, so that's one thing for, for them. But again, some of the aircraft actually still works with this um, style. But I hope you would find the project. Um, just as great an, of a tool or additional way of uh, interact with the uh, autopilot uh, and as I said I did this uh, project uh, back in next point 10 because there was some things that I felt could be easier for the end user and then I just uh, got a lot of help I have to admit I have had some help to get started with it and I know that um, there might be it might be possible to make some improvements on the main project um, but I actually got it to a, a point where where it actually works out for me quite well and, and it does what it should and, and so far I have seen other people actually work very using it and recommended it so so that couldn't be that bad so thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon bye bye